the show every time. Um, starting off a show is possibly the hardest position in comedy. There's nothing harder to do than come up to a crowd full of people and just start going off the top. Rawr! This guy has a hell of a talent at doing that. Um, I believe by day he's a lawyer. I think he works with my wife. So hi to all the GSA people who are here. Yay. <laughs> Government people with jobs. Yay. <laughs> Fuck all y'all. No, um, uh, this guy's a great friend of the room, funny guy. We listen to a lot of stuff he says. Y'all gotta start clapping, put y'all hands together for our very first time. We're gonna be so very so Christian Jeff, hi, come on. Yeah. 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 Thank you, RFG. Anybody here celebrating a birthday? Okay. How about the past year? <laughs> like to be inclusive. <laughs> For all the changes we've seen, one thing hasn't changed, and that's the fortune cookie. It doesn't tell you anything about your future. The name is a lie. What do they give you? Lucky numbers. As if the guy that wrote it knows how to win the lottery, but is going to tell you instead. <laughs> I'm going to do the stranger a huge favor. And I hate it when two people at the same table get the same fortune. Mine says you are very generous. Mine does too. And you end up arguing about whether it's fair to split the check because one of you had an extra drink. <laughs> so much for that fortune. <laughs> Fortunes are too nice. Give me a tough love fortune. You will not get any action tonight. <laughs> Hurry up and pay the check. Your meter's about to run out. Or you can have hindsight fortunes. There's a good idea. You shouldn't have ordered the mushu pork. You'll find out why in an hour. <laughs> this place wasn't a good choice for a first date. No wonder you're not getting any action tonight. <laughs> now those would be helpful fortune cookies. My parents came to stay with us for a few days, and I made them give me a security deposit. Was that wrong? <laughs> good thing they left the place in broom clean condition. Actually, it's so stressful. I made them give me an insecurity deposit. <laughs> That's for any psychological damage that they cause. <laughs> but I shouldn't make fun. It's tough getting older. And it's tough for a guy to get older because we still look at women the same way we always have. But women look at us differently. We become distinguished. <laughs> Yeah, I know how a girl in her 20s distinguishes me from other guys. She looks at me and thinks, he's my dad's age. <laughs> now work on that nice middle-aged man that young women come to with their problems. But not hot girls in their 20s problems, boring problems, like you take to dad. So I'm at my desk at work and a young female colleague asks for help with our new computer system. I guess I look like someone who knows how to fix things. Like a dad. <laughs> and she says her computer won't start. And I tell her she forgot to put her ID card in first. So she asks, innocently of course, because I'm the old guy, do you have to put it in all the way? <laughs> Wow, what am I supposed to say to that? I'm having three conversations in my head at once. The one that all guys would have. The one where I'm called to HR and told to explain myself. And the real one where I'm responding to her innocent question. But then she doesn't stop. Then she asks, if you take it out, can you put it back in again? <laughs> well, if you ask nicely, sure. <laughs> Some 
guys are seriously armed for cell phone action with the cell phone holster. <laughs> a holster for your phone? Is this the old west? <laughs> this guy came up behind me, so I turned and tweeted him. <laughs> tweeting limits you to 140 characters. That's just about perfect for my son. He's 18, and he gives out information like it's a cop show, and he's suspected of a crime. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you like to know? We only get one question, so it has to be perfect. So I ask, how was the movie? And he goes, we didn't go to the movies. And that's all I get? I've used up my question. <laughs> And now he's in college, but he's still parceling out the information. So I ask, what do you have for dinner? And he goes, stuff. Stuff? Really? So I say, I could use some more details. Who would you go to dinner with? People. <laughs> Success, two syllables. <laughs> and I took my son to college for his freshman year. We're walking around the dorm, we go into the laundry room, and there's a box with free condoms. Free condoms in the laundry room. That's great. So, so I was surprised to hear that the Trojan Company did a survey of sexual openness on college campuses, and his school was rated 10th in the country. 10th! They have free condoms in the laundry room, and they're only 10th. <laughs> to the first nine deliver them by room service? <laughs> Free condoms in the laundry room. What do they keep in the library? Scented oils? <laughs> and is my son going to associate laundry with sex his entire life? <laughs> this could be a problem. <laughs> and it gives a whole new meaning to fluff and fold. <laughs> You guys are great, thank you. <laughs> when my wife and I go shopping, we have two different objectives. For my wife, there's the period before the buying. There's the deliberation, the touching, the getting to know period. It's shopping foreplay. <laughs> guys have one goal, get in and get out. <laughs> I'll go to the store for socks and my wife will say, there's a sale on ties. And I'll say, I only came here for socks. You gotta stay focused. <laughs> so I'll go with my wife to the mall and I'll end up sitting in a chair. But not just any chair. It's the special chair for husbands. <laughs> the bored husband's chair. <laughs> not every store has a bored husband's chair. I'm talking to you, Old Navy. <laughs> now, single guys can't sit in the bored husband's chair because they have to make believe they're interested in what their girlfriend is buying. <laughs> right? <laughs> but married guys don't have to pretend anymore. So if you're a single guy and you're at the mall and you want to sit down, I have a message for you. Get out of my chair. I earn that chair. <laughs> so we sit in the bored husband's chair and bug our wives to hurry up because there's a game on. Why don't the stores make it the happy husband's chair? Give us a recliner, some pizza, and a flat screen, and we'd say, honey, take your time, the game's on. You see, we just want to sit down. We don't care what we sit on. My wife took me couch shopping. Couch shopping. She asked me what I think about the color, the fabric, if it goes with everything. I don't care. All I want to know is, does it face the TV? <laughs> but beer shopping, that shopping guys are good at. Men shop for beer the way women shop for shoes. Does this beer go with the TV? Does this freshness date match my outfit? 
excuse me, do you have this in a size 12 pack? <laughs> now the one type of shopping nobody likes is car shopping. But I always go to the same dealer, I get the same salesman, and he always does the same thing. I get the hearty handshake, and my wife gets a kiss. But not an innocent peck on the cheek. She gets a passionate, I want, I need, I desire your commission kiss. It's like his tongue's an SUV and my wife's mouth's a two-car garage. <laughs> that happens all the time. <laughs> it's pretty offensive, really. But I guess I don't mind because I always get a good deal. In fact, last month I said to my wife, we're getting near 100,000 miles, time to stock up on the Altoids. <laughs> Come to think of it, there's this option package I've been looking at. Maybe I should bring some Altoids too. <laughs> Love the reaction to that. <laughs> did he say that? Yes, he did. And when guys sit on that couch and watch sports, we think we control the game. Because when our team starts doing well, we won't change what we're doing. We sit still. We won't move our legs. We will not move at all. Because if we do, the rally will be over, our team will lose, and it will be our fault. Are we this dumb? The women say yes. But we really believe it. Ask any guy why he doesn't like to DVR a game. It's because it's already happened, so when he watches it, he can't affect the outcome. <laughs> I believe it. Last Sunday, my wife said to me, you want me to do that thing that you liked so much last time? And I said, you mean when the game was on and the team was losing, so you left the house and then the team won? Sure, go ahead. And if my team wins while I'm here tonight, next game, if I don't have a show, I'm turning my house into a comedy club. <laughs> I just have to figure out how to tell my kids that there's a $10 cover charge. <laughs> RFD, I love you. Thank you so much. Give it up for Jeff Tyson one more time. Big round of applause. This is really loud, isn't it? Really loud, isn't it? Is that right? How y'all doing tonight? Enjoying yourself?